What if Dan Brown's next big thriller isn't just fiction? What if the real secret of secrets has been hiding in plain sight for over 2,500 years? And what if cracking the code of consciousness is the final conspiracy? This isn't just about a manuscript. It's about the true architecture of reality and how the ancient Illuminati might have discovered it long before modern science ever caught on. Hi, I'm James, and this is The Quantified Soul, where we explore the science of consciousness, the mathematics of the soul, and the hidden truths that shape the visible world. Now, I've long been a fan of Dan Brown's thrillers and was excited and surprised to hear that he has a new book coming out soon, Secret of Secrets. We don't know all the details yet, but the premise is about a manuscript that could unravel what we think we know about consciousness. Sound familiar? It should, because this isn't just the stuff of thrillers. It's the beating heart of something very real. And today, I want to speculate about the real secret of secrets. Not in fiction, but in mathematics, neuroscience, and the hidden mission of the real Pythagorean Illuminati. So let's rewind to the lost symbol, Brown's earlier novel that set the stage for this one. In it, Catherine Solomon, a noetic scientist, drops a subtle but stunning claim that thought becomes exponentially more powerful when multiple minds focus on the same idea. Then she nudges Robert Langdon to consider something hidden in plain sight. The Hebrew word Elohim is plural. And so is the motto on the great seal of the United States. E pluribus unum. Out of many, one. A poetic moment, sure, but also a mathematical truth. Because in ontological mathematics, the system developed and protected by the real Illuminati, this is precisely how thought works. Not symbolically, literally, mathematically. The more minds that synchronize, the more powerful the wave function of thought becomes. The mind of God is not singular and outside of us. It is a collective and emergent resonance of coherent thought, and we are part of it. And this isn't just flowery language or metaphor. How this works can be precisely defined, understood, and even, I suggest, measured. Now, before your inner skeptic starts twitching, let me clarify. The Illuminati that Dan Brown writes about, that's narrative mythos. Largely fictionalized for drama. But it is based on something real. The actual Illuminati traces all the way back to Pythagoras. Yes, that Pythagoras. And has existed for over 2,500 years as a rational philosophical movement dedicated to understanding reality through mathematics, logic, and mind. Their secrecy wasn't about control or elitism. It was protection from persecution, dogma, and distortion by the uninitiated. They've been quietly preserving a knowledge-based approach to enlightenment, one that doesn't rely on belief, prophecy, or mystical experience, but reason and logic alone. And about 15 years ago, they actually started publishing. Yes, really. A communication cell of the modern Illuminati released a series of books, and they're actually still releasing books, outlining their framework, introducing the public, us, to ontological mathematics, the rational, provable foundation of existence. Not a theory about reality, not another theory of everything, a proof of reality. Ontological mathematics shows that existence is made not of particles, but of thought. Not metaphorically, mathematically. Thoughts are sinusoidal waveforms, and our souls are individual frequency domains. The universe, then, is a vast interference pattern of minds each contributing their thoughts to the collective. Which means that the secret of secrets isn't just that consciousness is important. It's that everything is actually made of thought. So you might say that consciousness is everything, but more importantly, it can be defined precisely. And here's where it hits close to home. Because in my neurotherapy work, I don't just help people improve their attention or emotional regulation. I help them tune the signal of their mind. We're not working with just brain activity. We're working with soul structure, observable in the EEG, 
trainable through feedback and stimulation and modeled through mathematics. But let's come back to the power of resonance. Carl Jung called the collective domain, this interference pattern of all of our thoughts, the unus mundus, one world beneath the illusion of separation. He saw this through symbols, synchronicities, and archetypes. But what Jung intuited, ontological mathematics, can prove. Every individual mind is a frequency domain. And when multiple minds interact mathematically, their waveforms combine through constructive and destructive interference. Consider a simple case of two sinusoidal thoughts interacting this way. If they're perfectly in phase, they maximize each other through constructive interference. If they're completely out of phase, they cancel each other out. But frankly, most thoughts land somewhere in between. This kind of interaction is how power scales. This is how revolutions start, not through numbers alone, but through coherence. Imagine 10 people with shared vision and tuned minds, not just agreeing, but resonating. That's not 10 times the power, that's potentially exponential. Now imagine a society built on that. But let's not get too abstract, because this isn't just a cosmic story. It's also a personal one. We're individually not just one mind either. We're all a plurality of selves. Each thought, each impulse, each memory, its own waveform. When these are in phase, we feel clarity, confidence, and power. We feel whole, united. But when they're not, we feel fragmented. We fight ourselves, we contradict ourselves, we get stuck in loops. The same laws of constructive and destructive interference apply internally. Dissociative identity disorder is a great extreme example where our inner parts become so separated from another and it's sometimes difficult to get the whole system to cooperate. But most of us operate lighter on the spectrum, perhaps not entirely different personalities, but you may have a work self, a home self, and a lover self that all come out at different times with different character. You don't need 10 people to create chaos. Your own mind can be enough. Now take that idea and scale it up. We have a world of fragmented individuals that's creating fragmented nations. We can't build collective clarity with incoherent minds. This is where Rousseau's general will is relevant, but often gets misunderstood. It wasn't about majority rule. It's not about consensus. It's about phase alignment, a deeper kind of unity where our individual wills naturally synchronize with each other. It's not forced, it's emergent. But how can that happen if every participating mind is scattered, distracted, and distorted? This is why the work always begins inside. We synchronize ourselves, and then we can become a tuning fork for others. So what is the real secret of secrets? Well, it's not a hidden bloodline. It's not a manuscript locked in a vault. It's not a metaphor or symbol waiting to be decoded. It is the structure of mind. It's the code behind existence itself. Mathematical thought expressed through eternal evolving waveforms. Maybe Dan Brown's next novel will hint at this in a symbolic way. Panpsychism, for example, noetic fields, the idea that reality is mental, not material. But the real secret, I think, is not waiting to be uncovered. It's already been published. The truth is, we're not physical beings having mental experiences. We are mathematical minds, autonomous, eternal, structured systems of thought having physical experiences. Reality isn't made of matter, it's made of mathematical waves. And those waves are us. And when enough of those minds become coherent, when the interference resolves and the pattern aligns, we will see a revolution. We just need resonance. Because truth doesn't need enforcement. It needs recognition. Dan Brown introduced millions to the thrill of hidden knowledge ancient codes, forgotten brotherhoods, and secret truths buried in plain sight. But the greatest mystery of all isn't symbolic. It's mathematical. It's mental. When structured minds align, when thought becomes clear and collective order emerges, 
we stop interpreting the code of reality and we start participating in it. If there's any real Illuminati conspiracy, I think it's that they already told us the truth. They wrote it down and published it. And most of the world looked away. Okay, thank you for watching. If this resonated, if something in you is ready to stop seeking and start understanding, please subscribe to The Cream of Matter on Substack, where I publish new articles roughly weekly. In my upcoming book, I take everything we talk about here and bring it down to earth. I show how we can apply ontological mathematics to understand the brain, to train coherence, and align with the evolutionary logic of the soul. Not mystically, mathematically. And if you want to take that journey into practice, check out my neurotherapy work at PeakMind. We don't just manage symptoms, we help tune the signal. And when that signal aligns with truth, everything changes. Links are below. Thanks again for watching. And remember, the real secret of secrets may have already been revealed. The question now is what we'll do with it.